With one in three motorcycles purchased now being from the naked sector, we shouldn't be surprised that manufacturers are innovating to stay ahead. But with the ZH2, Kawasaki haven't just bolted a piece of tech to their range topper, they've gone and strapped a supercharger to it. Undoubtedly the fastest bike I've ever ridden, my first comment on the ZH2 is that it's absolutely ballistic. 200 PS, 100 foot-pounds of torque, this 1000cc inline 4 is a feat of engineering. The smooth, powerful and flexible nature Kawasaki inline 4s are famous for, the ZH2 retains those attributes and yet adds a thrust that's more comparable to a Typhoon jet than a combustion engine motorcycle. The ZH2 is unbeatable in terms of outright speed. Anywhere in the rev range and in any gear, the speed available is outstanding. In our performance testing, we took the ZH2 in excess of 150 miles an hour and put it up against the mighty KTM 1290 Super Duke R. And in roll-on performance, in gears above third, it left the beast for dead. The supercharger chirp is totally addictive with a two-stage chirp, one around 8,000 RPM and one around four. Anytime you're in the upper chirp zone, you best strap yourself in as this rocket is about to take off. Holding onto gears in full throttle not only has you at ludicrous speeds at a blink of an eye, but it demands more guts from you than most are prepared to give. However, what is so impressive is the flexibility of the motor. The ZH2 is a bike that you can run at 20 miles an hour in sixth gear and then smoothly and powerfully accelerate all the way up to 180. The engine doesn't chug, it doesn't snatch, it doesn't catch you out. From walking speed to warp speed, you, the rider, are in full control. The engine pretty much sums up how the ZH2 rolls. It's a do everything super naked. Want a daily commuter? No issues. A bit of touring? Sunday blasts? You want to do a track day? This is not a one trick pony. This is the ultimate do it all super naked. And with this in mind, the ZH2 doesn't look to compete with the sharpest handling super nakeds out there. It's relaxed riding position, lower foot pegs and swung back bars built for a different type of riding aggression. And it's in this way that the ZH2 makes its play. And just like when an athlete decides to train for a 100 meter sprinting and in doing so compromises their marathon capability, the ZH2 positions itself for the everyday decathlon that is riding a motorcycle on the road. The road going handling of the ZH2 is excellent. It's 240 kilo weight, chassis and shower suspension combined to deliver a fantastic road going plushness that soaks up all the bumps, feels solid and planted. However, it also holds a great line as you do start to push it and it doesn't get overwhelmed. Fast, smooth and long corners are where the Z's real comfort zone is. Stopping a heavyweight heat seeking missile does take some doing and the brake setup on the ZH2 does an admirable job. M4 calipers and Nissin master cylinder providing a great stopping power in all road going scenarios. In our testing when braking hard from 150 miles an hour, we did experience some brake fade and the ABS was intrusive. So track work may benefit from braided lines and some playing with the ABS settings to maximize the setup on offer. Connecting the missile to the road are the Pirelli Rosso 3 tyres. This is an excellent tyre that we were really impressed with in both dry and wet weather riding. Completing the ZH2 handling package is an electronic suite lifted right out of Kawasaki's championship winning superbike with a 6 axis IMU sending information to multi-level traction control, rider modes, ABS and anti-wheelie and a beautiful quick shifter up and down. In our experience, full power mode and between one and two traction control made the most of the engine with a good safety blanket. 
and due to the controllable nature of the engine, we found we could modulate the power well enough with our throttle hand. Unlike many other competitors, the ZH2 has all of these electronics as standard. If there is any limiting factor to the performance of the ZH2, it's the front end under full acceleration. The combination of the power on offer, the ergonomics, weight distribution and a lack of a steering damper often undermines and limits the performance that the bike is capable of. The bike is constantly wheeling and skipping against the tarmac up to 120 miles an hour. This gives a lack of confidence and a wobble that is unnerving and it upsets an otherwise rock solid riding experience. If purchasing a ZH2 we would recommend fitting a steering damper. Various companies are now offering performance tuning to this machine and with the addition of an exhaust system, a remap and an air filter, the potential is for 240 horsepower at the rear wheel. As easy as it is to get carried away here, in our opinion it's a moot point as the Z would require other customizations to enable you to put that power down effectively. The looks of the ZH2 have certainly split opinion in the motorcycle world. However, with the Sigomi heritage of the Z range, it makes total sense and the front end supercharger intake completes that powerful front end. The ZH2 does have some beautiful lines. Its rear end sleek and sporty. The red trellis frame pops and the Akropovich can fitted to our performance model is beautiful, providing a fantastic and yet legal soundtrack. Kawasaki's mantra for this bike was to make a powerful machine that could be ridden every day. And with that in mind, they have absolutely smashed it. So Ollie, you've been helping us over the last couple of days ride the ZH2. Yeah. What do you think? It's not every day you get to ride a supercharged 200 horsepower naked bike. <laughs> well, there aren't many of them out there to be exactly, fair. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's a missile, it's rapid. It is. Um, you know, it's the engine is, is nothing else like it, I don't think. You know, the, the power of it in any gear, it's super flexible. Um, you can be as lazy as you want to be with it. You know, we were up in the, on the passes doing, you know, 30, 40 mile an hour in fourth, fifth and sixth, you know, mm. and there's no bother with it. It's super smooth and it makes it really versatile. And I think that's really good because it is branded as that dual motorcycle. And, um, you know, with the engine, you've got a good suspension setup. The brakes are okay. Um, you know, you've got Bluetooth connectivity, up, down, quick shifter, um, cruise control, all the electronics which you'd want on a bike of this price. And this, you know, we're in 2020. You know, it's electronics are needed, aren't needed, depending on who you ask. But they're know. needed on this. Yeah, I agree for sure. I'm not normally a fan of <laughs> loads of them because there's yeah. more to go wrong. But exactly. on this bike. I concede, man. Yeah, like sure. 200. I mean, you need you need it. Yeah. I mean, we were doing runs um, on on the uh, run runway here, and uh, fourth gear 100 and 110, and it was skipping. You know, so we actually didn't turn off the traction control, but I think you definitely do need it, like you said. So yeah. Um, for me as well, the noise. It's a bit of a do-it-all motorcycle, isn't it though? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You can do everything. You can go around town. You can go to the shops. You can do some mileage. Um, yeah, you can do it all. Yeah. yeah. But for me, the noise of it, you know, the, the supercharger chirp and the whistle of it, like you said, there's sort of two stages of it. There's a yeah. high rev and then a lower one as well. And you, you'll hear it on the video, but it's it's wicked. There's nothing else like it. Um, it's got so loads of character. Exactly, yeah. And twinned with that Acro as well. Um, bit of a cannon, I've got to say. <laughs> bit of a cannon. <laughs> you know, but, you know, with. Well, it is a rocket four, ship. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Euro 4, Euro 5 sound and emissions regulations, it's, it is what it is, but... Sound, well, you, well, you've got to consider on that though, there, there, there isn't a, ca you know, the, the exhaust is the cap. Yeah, that's got the cap so, built in, so yeah. that's why it's that, that's why it's that, that design, massive. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but what do yeah, you think uh, about that, um, you know, the, the concept of tuning this up though? I mean, people are going to put lightweight wheels they're going to take shred some of the weight they're going to tune it up and put a full system on you'll be looking at 250 300 horsepower for sure yeah easy you know but, but my big question though is like can you put it down on the road i think at that point you you've got to put a longer <laughs> swing arm on it you Take your bike with a long swing arm yeah because because <laughs> yeah well it needs it doesn't it it does actually need it. <laughs> it's so funny because 
we were doing these, um, you know, we were, we were going up and down the runway, and this thing is light, isn't oh, it? Yeah, yeah it's. Um, I yep. felt like, you know, even though it's like a 240 horse, uh, 240 kilo bike, yep. I could have done with at least another 30 kilos up front. <laughs> And a steering damper. And a steering damper. <laughs> that might help. Yeah. You know, the uh, it's, it was skipping. You know, it was skipping because there's so much power. It was just trying to lift. And when you go and you're sort of like this, and it's, I mean, who's going to be doing 100, 120, 30, 40 mile an hour on the road, you know? Well, no, well hopefully not. Exactly. No one, really. But um, that's what it comes down to, isn't it? So. Yeah. yeah. Looks. I mean, Let's be honest, it's divided in terms of people's opinions when it came out. I mean, Kawasaki have, you know, thrown a blank sort of sheet of paper at it. And I mean, the more I look at it and the more different angles and stuff, I'd, you know, look at it and think, actually, it's not that bad. You know, I, I quite like how it's it's strong, it's it's characterful. And, you know, the red trellis frame on this one is, is wicked. Mm. Um, and the asymmetrical front with the supercharger uh, intake is, is cool. You know, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it's beautiful or pretty. It's, no. it's cool. It's good looking, but powerful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, any other downsides? Um, I mean, the weight of it. It, it is a bit of a you know, hundred uh, two hundred and thirty-four five kilos. You can definitely tell that when pushing it around and it's fairly low speed. That's not always bad though, because you feel more planted yes. when you're riding. Yes. And you don't necessarily feel that weight, but. You can definitely tell that under brakes, you know, we, we, we found out there's a little bit of brake fade with, the, mm. with them, so... Not um, that you feel it on the road. No, exactly. But when you're braking from like 150, 160, yeah. Yeah. it, it does boil up, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit squashy, but um, weight, not always, a, you know, not always a bad thing, but it is slightly heavier than its competitors. Um, little annoying things, like the stand, when you try and kick it up, it, you know, it takes two goes. <laughs> Just needs a stronger spring. Yeah, needs a stronger spring. Um, other than that, not, you know, nothing really. Um, and it's Kawasaki reliability. Exactly. That that is a that is. We've had know, nothing, that we've doesn't had no sell, does it? Like they go, Kawasaki reliable. You know, it doesn't sort of <laughs> no. grab the headlines, does it? Exactly. But you know, that's what you're buying into with a, with sure. a Kawasaki. I mean, it's been solid. You know, we've had it for a couple of weeks and um, no niggles, no problems, all good. Just start go comfortable yeah everything you know it's, it's good motorcycle i think so awesome yeah so that's been our review of the zh2 i hope you've really enjoyed it i'm going to put all of the link in the description for all the gear that we've been wearing on test please like please comment really like to hear what you think about this bike and other things that we're doing too subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time